live from the CBS Broadcast Center. This is CBS 2 News at 11. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm trying to relax after working all day. You just said I asked you. Confrontations that could turn violent at any moment. Tonight, I take you inside the NYPD to see how officers handle some of the most intense and dangerous situations in our city. More than 24 hours after the storm and roads and sidewalks still iced over. Now, there's another round of snow headed our way. But first, good luck trying to get to LaGuardia on time. Traffic so bad, travelers ditched their cars and decided to sprint down the Grand Central Parkway. Good evening, everyone. I'm Maurice Dubois. And I'm Christine Johnson. This was the scene all night to see a brake lights and traffic that was more than stop and go. CBS 2's Jessica Layton live now at LaGuardia with the very latest for us. Jessica? Christina Maurice, there's a flight scheduled to land here in about an hour. And from Mobile 2, you can see the congestion building up at Central Terminal. But really, this is nothing compared to what we saw just a few hours ago. It was such a mess that it was downright dangerous. Hopping over a concrete divider with two suitcases and a backpack, you'd have to feel pretty desperate to pull that stunt. But all day and night, we saw people doing anything they could to maneuver the mess that is LaGuardia Airport. That was bold, getting out in traffic. Did you feel like you had no choice? No choice. I'm already late, very late. I'm probably missing my flight right now. Weaving through red brake lights on foot and schlepping along slushy sidewalks in boots that weren't made for walking, this guy got a little hand from CBS 2's Lou Young hopping a fence. I've never seen it like this. It's completely insane. Passengers like Tim Perry and pilots like Dave Spencer will tell you they've never experienced problems like this with an airport. Never. Usually it's bad, but this is about as bad as I've seen it. New York is a great city, but they got to do better than this. Blame the madness on the multi year, multi billion dollar construction project. Flights canceled in Thursday's storm and the usual weekend winter rush to get out of New York. Time is money. The airport says it has more police on the ground helping to move traffic, but based on these frustrated and tired faces, it didn't seem to help much. I'm never, never coming here again. And I spoke with an airport employee here a couple hours ago. She told me it was such a mess in there today and so many people missed their flights. The majority of them have been rebooked for some time this weekend. So really, there's no telling what tomorrow will bring here. That's the latest live from LaGuardia Airport tonight. Jessica Layton, CBS 2 News. Okay, Jessica, thank you. Well, mounds of snow, icy roads, and slush puddles still around since yesterday's snowstorm. Tri-state area spent the day digging out. CBS 2's Valerie Castro live along 8th Avenue in Chelsea with more on the cleanup and the concerns. Valerie. Well, Maurice, in parts of the city, the cleanup is far from over. Believe it or not, this is actually a bus stop here along 8th Avenue. All night long, we've seen people climbing this mound of snow just to catch the bus every time it comes by. Over here, you can see the dirty snow that has piled up every time the plows have come down this street. And over here, on top of that snow, all of this gross garbage still waiting to be cleaned up. Friday night was not for the fashion forward, forced to gingerly make their way over this sidewalk obstacle for a ride uptown. It was a day-long ordeal for New Yorkers, traipsing, leaping, and hobbling through slush and snow to get back to the usual routine. But it wasn't just annoying. In some cases, the weather caused real problems. This cell phone video captured smoke pouring from a car in Prospect Lefferts Gardens that caught fire after the manhole cover in the street underneath it exploded. The aftermath, a still smoking manhole and a car that looked like it had been in an accident. It belongs to Mo Bins visiting from Ohio. Well, something needs to be done because, um, you know, this could have been a lot worse than, than what it was. You know, thank God it was able to get caught when it did. But, you know, I'm the person that's the, the, the odd man out because, you know, my car is totaled. A similar situation in nearby Park slope had Con Ed crews working quickly to repair the damage that left a portion of the street without power. Into the night, pedestrians carefully made their way around the still icy streets. For others, like Zakaya Cook, the bus stop was just a mess of muck. Nasty, very nasty. Not to mention the piles of garbage carefully balanced on top of the filthy snow. I think they should remove it like they do on the highways. It's real nasty and inconvenient. She eventually gave up and opted for a cab instead. 
And as bad as all of this looks, we actually have seen city sanitation crews here on 8th Avenue cleaning some things up tonight. You can only hope that they take care of this before the next storm rolls in. Reporting live in Chelsea, Valerie Castro, CBS 2 News. Okay, Valerie and Lonnie is busy working on your forecast, which includes more snow plus the chance of rain. You'll talk about that and your weekend coming up in just a few minutes. New tonight now, President Trump dropping more hints about reinstating a travel ban, saying the courts are just one of many options. We'll win that battle, but we also have a lot of other options, including just filing a brand new order on Monday. Are you planning to do that? Is that your plan? Could very well be, but I'd like to keep you, you know, I'd like to surprise you. The president made those remarks while en route to Mar-a-Lago, where tonight he had dinner with the Japanese prime minister and also New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Protesters nearly blocked Betsy DeVos today from making her first appearance as education secretary. The guards, can I get some books on the guards, please? Oh, yeah. Don't let this car through. Well, that SUV was actually a decoy sent to a middle school in Washington, D.C. DeVos <laughs> snuck into the building through a back door while demonstrators were out front. Her appearance was intended to calm emotions in the wake of her confirmation hearing. New tonight now, we think of police as crime fighters, not psychologists, but increasingly, the NYPD's interactions are with people in extreme mental distress. Tonight, I take you behind the scenes at the Police Academy, where new training pits actors against officers as they relearn how to handle the most volatile of encounters with emotionally disturbed people, or EDPs. What am I doing? I'm sitting here. A fight breaks out. You just said I asked you. Between a couple. I walked off. Day, right? He's a veteran with post-traumatic stress disorder who owns a bodega. Whoa, 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 whoa. She is his third wife. I can't believe this that yeah. you're doing this again. You know you're not supposed to be doing Oh, stop your <laughs> up, right? As it escalates... What are you doing? I'm trying to relax after working all day. Cops are called, and I've just been trained as one of the responding officers. I'm, I'm Officer Dubois. Hey, Officer Dubois. How you doing? What are you, French? Right here, right now, my gut reaction may be to punch this guy. But I've learned my response can either escalate the situation or diffuse it. Whatever you need, man. Uh, like How's everything? everything? This is the NYPD's crisis intervention training for patrol officers. Dr. Tracy Kazee is the deputy commissioner. It's a really, really powerful way to learn. Mm -hmm. The four-day course includes role play between actors portraying mentally ill citizens and officers learning the most effective ways to deal with them. 80% of what we're doing is listening. Lieutenant Mark Turner is an instructor. When the emotions are high, your rationale is low. Every year, 130,000 calls come into 911 involving emotionally disturbed people. Give me a snapshot, if you will, of where mental health is in the city. One in five New Yorker adults uh, meeting criteria for diagnosable mental illness. While the vast majority of calls do end peacefully, some have not. Over the years, police have tried a variety of tactics to deal with the emotionally disturbed. In 1984, CBS2 reporter Chris Borgen demonstrated what was known as the psycho bar. And I was wrapped up in a, like a blue mat. In 2007, Dustin Gross, a schizophrenic, says police forced him into a mesh restraining device. I just wish that they, they uh, kind of empathized with me a little more. And in 2016... Uh, my commitment to the city is that we're going to investigate this. There was the highly publicized case of Deborah Danner, a mentally ill woman killed by police in her home, forcing the department to reevaluate its procedures. I would never forgive them because she didn't have to die. Wallace Cook is not only a former NYPD officer, he's Danner's cousin. Did I ran into mentally ill? Plenty of them. All you have to do was show people a little kindness. And that is what today's training is trying to do. That someone can be a functioning person and can be productive and can have a family, but have a crisis periodically. That's a really important lesson. A lesson that's actually taught to the officers by real people living full lives that includes having mental illness. We depend on you to protect us, even if we don't know we want you to protect us. Since the course began here in 2015, more than 5,000 NYPD officers have been trained. So is it working? And he looked at me, he's like, I'm done. I'm fed up. Officer Giovanna Rodriguez with the 109th Precinct says it helped her save a suicidal man's life. Do you smile when you think about that? I do. Why? I know I did a good job that day. 
Can you do me a favor? Can you what? just come around, the, can you come around this thing? And so did my partners back at the bodega. Sergeant Kenneth Jefferson and Officer Raul Rodriguez not only calmly talked down that irate owner, they got him to agree to go for help. Uh, I'm sorry about the French thing, bro. I can okay. be an well, I'm sorry. Preventing things from going really bad by keeping him away from the back closet and the loaded rifle inside. Now, the city's inspector general recently criticized the NYPD, saying it doesn't have an efficient system to dispatch the officers who received this training. NYPD says its goal is to train the entire patrol force. Now, another unique aspect of the training officers at times were wearing headsets that allow them to feel what it's like to hear voices in their mm. heads. So, um, back to that scenario. Doc Doherty, the actor in mm -hmm. there, very convincing. I would say so. I walk in, first it's sort of, you think it's kind of lighthearted, and then it's intense, it's serious. Mm -hmm. And you understand what it's like to be an officer where you don't know what's behind the desk, where those guys' hands are, mm -hmm. where, you know, he has his weapons, if he has any, mm -hmm. and they very professionally took that situation down. <laughs> it was really Did something to see. Did it kind of catch see. off guard, though, very like much when, so. it, when it first happened? Very much so. Yeah, but then you learn that they have no idea what they're walking into yeah. every single day. That's All new respect. Really right? impressive, yeah. All right. You bet. Still to come, right here at 11, trouble on the train. No heat, no working toilets, no access to food or water. Uh, you know, there's no electricity. Stuck for hours, but the travel nightmare was just beginning. One more centimeter and he wouldn't have been able to breathe. A man stuck up to his nose in muddy water. I don't think we need to reset anything. We're, we're doing just fine. Does your relationship need a reset? Tips for a couple's tune-up just in time for Valentine's Day. Trouble on an Amtrak train in the Bronx. It lost power for four hours early today, stranding people in the dark and cold. The train was headed from Washington to Boston overnight when it came to a halt. Amtrak says the problem was down power lines from the blizzard. Passengers say there was no heat, no toilet, no food, and virtually no information there at 3 a.m. from the crew. We heard it was an electrical problem. They were working on it. Then we heard they were bringing up a diesel engine, and then another hour would go by. We'd hear nothing. Uh, the crew basically just went and hid. Amtrak said it regrets what happened, and it says refunds will be given on what it calls a case-by-case -case basis. Being stuck on a cold, dark train with no bathroom would be a picnic compared to what happened in Australia. A man got trapped in muddy water up to his nose. He got pinned when his excavator tipped over, but he kept his nostrils somehow above the water's surface. He was there for hours until a neighbor found him and got some help. We're told he only has minor injuries. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and if you're looking for the perfect way to show your loved one just how much you care, there is one gift that could change your relationship for the better. CBS 2's Tracy Carrasco explains. Flowers, candy, a fancy dinner, all make great Valentine's Day presents. But relationship coach Carl Romain says if you want to give your partner a gift that'll last, he suggests hitting the reset button on your relationship. Taking it from wherever it is now, and transforming it into the relationship that you want. And believes Valentine's Day is the perfect day to do it. Because so many people are so aware and conscious and thinking about their relationship at that moment. To reset your relationship, Romaine says, first, have fun. Go back to dating. You know, so many times couples have been together for a long time and they just stop dating each other. Second, communicate. To sit down and slow down and really communicate with our partner, expressing what we really want. And third, listen. When you're listening to your partner at that level, you're not communicating back and, you know, trying to be defensive. We asked couples in Hoboken what they think. And it gives us an opportunity to slow down, talk to one another. Well, I don't think we need to reset anything. We're, we're doing just fine. No, I think a relationship's always growing and changes have to be made. She's always right. <laughs> Is that what keeps it going then? It is. But for Ed and Lucille Garcia, married 42 years, they say, why wait for Valentine's Day? Our generation, we check in every day. Every day. <laughs> so then is that the secret? That's the yes. secret. Yes. Romaine says it's never too late to restart over again. He says if the relationship is important to you, do the work and you'll be happy you did. Reporting from Hoboken, Tracy Carrasco, CBS 2 News. Hmm. Wait, relationships take work? You're kidding. Huh? <laughs> What does that mean? Wait. <laughs>
I thought every day was Valentine's <laughs> Day, however. Anyway, Lonnie is here. Looking ahead to the weekend. I know, I know. It was, it was a cheap grab. I had a scratch on my tongue. It was a try. <laughs> <laughs> right. Guys, let's show you what we've got out there as far as the weather watchers. And I want to go straight to the pictures because it's a day for you to send me in your pictures. It's always that kind of day. But obviously we had some snow shots for you. I'll pick any of them right here. How about this one is from Kathy Kahn. She writes, finally got to use the snowblower. Oh, uh, made the investment and you're right. You want to use it. So you got to use it uh, today. Let me show you what we've got outside right now in New York City. You have some, old, you have some clouds making their way over the city. 29 degrees currently. We had some upper level snow flurries flying around pretty impressively uh, about, I say, half an hour ago or so. A little bit of a break right now over New York City. Uh, if you take a look at what the high temp was today, 32. Early low this morning was 19. So it's been a all right, cold weather day all day long. What we see out there right now, well, snow flurries flying through the city and through portions of uh, the tri state area. But when I say flying through the city, taking a little bit of a break right now. But let's zoom in here a little bit. What I'd like to do back here, like around Pike County, all right, if we can track this out, this is making its move towards the city. I think you could possibly see some flurries and, and act activity that makes its way down to the ground arrive, you know, maybe an hour and a half from now or so, it's saying about 1256, may get here a little bit earlier than that, get to places like Patterson, 1228. Again, it may move a little quicker than what we're timing it out. But it's out there and it's moving from west to east. Here's the big picture, okay, the overall flow in our atmosphere is coming in from the Pacific, all right, which has been just so, uh, you know, uh, unstable out there with all kinds of storm after storm moving on. It's been then flowing up towards, you know, the Great Lakes and then dropping into our area. I don't see this pattern changing really through this week. So we've got a lot of activity to look at. So there's going to be a chance for some snow out there tonight. A little bit, okay, not much at all. Then you have another chance on Sunday night going into Monday. And then we have to watch Thursday. So this system's going to cle clear the area by tomorrow morning. Now we're looking at Sunday morning. Okay, so you get some nighttime snow showers tonight, and it's gone for tomorrow. And then Sunday morning, here we are, 6 a.m., some rain starts to move in. But watch those areas north of New York City. Not the city. The city's looking, look, looking like rain, but could be frozen north of the area. And then watch this just blow up into this big old storm uh, off of northern New England. It's going to put big snow down for places uh, like Sugarloaf Ski Resort in Maine. How much do we pick up? Here we go. Could be an inch or two north of the city and really, you know, zero to an inch around the city. For Monday morning, the second event could be maybe, two, remember, these are totals, these are cumulative totals. So it could be, you know, two inches again north of the city. It's just rain, really, in the city. So those are your two events right there we're talking about. 45 for Saturday, 39 for Sunday. Watch your temperatures on Sunday. If they don't quite make it up to that 39-degree mark, then maybe you could see some frozen precip in the city as well. But I think we want to keep our eyes on Thursday because there's some indications that Thursday system could actually be uh, a bit more of a player in this area. But it's, it's not a definite yet. Not a definite. Okay, player. But it's active out there. Thank you, Lonnie. All right, well, the countdown is on for music's biggest night. It's the 59th annual Grammy Awards. And the Late Late Show's James Corden helped roll out the red carpet in L.A., where he will host the show for the first time. Corden says the one thing that he won't do is sing. Instead, he'll take a back seat to the night's huge performers like Bruno Mars, Lady Gaga, and Metallica. But with Corden, you just never know. It'll be fun if it all goes well. If it doesn't, it's just going to be me crying my eyes out while I eat an In-N-Out burger. <laughs> the meeting for the top prizes is Adele and Beyonce. You can watch the show live this Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on CBS2. Otis Livingston now with your Friday Night Sports. Otis. Hey, Maurice, who knew Charles Oakley had hockey fans? They were chanting his name at the Ranger game last night, so it wouldn't be a big surprise if they did it tonight at a Nick game. That would actually be the highlight for their game against the Nuggets. Jokic. Welcome back, everyone. Football season is over. Baseball season starting up this weekend with pitchers and catchers reminds me of what a special year it's been for team sports. Let's start with the men's NCAA tournament. Chris Jenkins from the last second jumper from long distance to beat North Carolina, give Villanova its second national title. NBA Finals Cavaliers coming back from down 3-1 to Golden State Jersey Zone. Kyrie Irving, step back three on Steph Curry in Game 7, the first title for the city of Cleveland in 52 years. Chicago Eagles baseball went more than double that long, 108 years until the Cubs, who are also down three games to one, beat the Indians 8-7 in Game 7. How about college football? Clemson against mighty Alabama. Deshaun Watson, the short TD pass to Hunter Renfro with a second to play. Clemson wins 35-31, and of course, 
just last Sunday. Yeah. Tom Brady and the Patriots rallied from a 28 to 3 third quarter deficit, scored 31 straight, including overtime. Brady, Brady and Belichick's record fifth Super Bowl title. So now, as we go into baseball season, we hopefully March Madness will yeah. give us another finish like that this year. George Mason, I, I just. How good there he goes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's just, well, just slide that in. <laughs> we got it. We're with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So, so you leave this weekend? Sunday morning, yes. Sunday morning. Spring training. Down to Port St. Lucie for a couple days, then over to Tampa, back to Port St. Lucie. Got to cover both teams. Right. No need to bring the snow boots, I'm sure. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is next. He's got Will Arnett and Pete Holmes with the entire team. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. See ya. Good night.